Hello and welcome to another How to Paint Cars tutorial and today um, we're going to do something quite different actually. If I just showed you the painting of the car without telling you what it was, I wonder how many of you would have decided that it was a Volvo. I think for a lot of us our view of Volvos tends to be that they're big, reliable, very well built estate cars not the most exciting thing in the world but in the 60s Volvo went against character and built this beautiful sports coupe so we're going to start just make the um, left hand headlight now although the car is facing to the right we're quite a bit over from the center of the page because we're doing a lot of the length of the car because that's where a lot of the beauty of it actually is the Volvo um, P1800, um, it has a real Italian look by it, and that's because the designer, um, a man I think called Pelle Pettersson, was um, tutored by um, an Italian who'd worked for Gear. And for a long time, until about 2009, Volvo insisted that it was actually an Italian design. The P1800 um, was released, I think, around about the same time as the uh, E-Type Jaguar. Um, I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Can you, now you've got the two headlights in, remember the one on the right, because it's further away from the viewer, has to be smaller and maybe a bit thinner than the one on the left. And then draw this start of this grill shape. It's basically a straight line with curved corners for the top from just above halfway between the two headlights and then those two capital C's curving round with um, the one on the right being a bit more out of shape. Yeah so it came out about the same time as E-Type Jaguar. Now there was a television series just starting in uh, the UK called The Saint based on novels by Leslie Charteris. If you just see down there below the left hand headlight I've just popped on the little side light and apparently so the story goes uh, they asked Jaguar if they could um, have a couple of e-types for the series. Jaguar politely declined so then they asked Volvo and Volvo agreed uh, and it did them no harm whatsoever. Can you see the shape which has just come there? That's the start of the wraparound bumper but the wraparound bumper it's in two parts and it kind of stops in the middle where the um, number plate, the license plate is. Just look out for that in, uh, and that will come up in a minute. So as I say it was used in the Saint um, he had a he had a white version with the number plate ST1. Um, well, we're having red because I think it looks superb in red. Um, but it, it did did good things for the sales of the car because the Saint was a popular series. Although it was made in the UK, it was sold across the world. And it did Roger Moore, who starred in it, no harm whatsoever. So can you see what I mean about that bumper ending? Um, not quite halfway along the radiator grill. You see that little black mark as well uh, just to the right of the side light. Also I've started doing the um, interior lines of the radiator just to to make the chrome trim. There you go and you see I've added the license plate there did the bumper on the right hand side that's curving round to below the headlight, put the side light in underneath the right hand headlight, finished the chrome trim. Now if you look at the chrome trim you've got a nice wide band on the top and on the left hand side but hardly anything at all on the right and on the bottom. That's because of the angle that the car is facing. And we've also got that little top mark on top of the radiator, um, just above the centre of the radiator. OK. Now, the obvious thing to notice there is the line of the bonnet, 
which is a nice gentle arc curving back to the left uh, ending considerably a fair bit to the left of the um, headlight now I will admit because this is such a sleek and beautiful shape I wanted to get it right so if you look at the right hand headlight coming out of the top I've just got a pencil mark there of where that wing is going to be and you can also more clearly see I've started using pencil to sketch in the wheel arch um, the only reason as I've said before which I don't use pencil on this to begin with normally is because the marks are difficult to see but this was to make things easier for me if you're using pencil you can play around you can make if you look on the left hand um, edge of the wheel arch you can see I've made three or four different lines there just trying it out to get it what looks right to me so there I've once I'm happy with the line of the wing there I've just drawn it in it's coming from the left hand uh, top edge of the bonnet or the hood all the curving all the way down to the top of that headlight okay And now the wheel arch. Um, I went for kind of in the middle of the marks I'd made. This is quite a long, quite a fat wheel arch. Now what you are going to be doing is you're going to be drawing um, a line from the um, left hand uh, corner of the bumper up through the wheel arch and that's going to give us the line of the body there. So Bear that in mind when you're bringing the curve of the wheel arch down. But before we do that, there's the chrome trim to put in. Now the top line of the wheel arch there, the slant on that, the chrome trim should be parallel until it gets very close to the left hand headlight, in which case you can just have a very gentle pointy curve coming down there. And I do mean very gentle. Extend that uh, chrome trim back well past the centre of the page, past the wheel arch, and that just gives you something to work with for the distances. And then it's easy to add the top of the left hand wing up. Start with the headlight, curve up, and then level the curve out more until you're parallel to the chrome trim, going back to the left to about the same distance and now we bring the edge of the door and also the top edge of the bonnet bottom edge of the windscreen so try and gauge the distance look at the distance I've got on the screen try and gauge that this is why you'd be better off working in pencil at the moment um, as a rough estimate you want to start the curved corner at the bottom of the windscreen on the left about if you look at the distance from the left hand edge of the wheel arch to the right hand edge of the wheel arch by the bumper now try and measure in your with your eye about half that distance because that's about the distance from being directly to the left of being directly above the wheel arch that you want to be starting the windscreen line and then curve it gently round in an upwards curve which meets its apex where it joins the right hand edge of the bonnet which you did a little while ago you can see I've, I've, I've fudged around with that a little bit and that's why it's so much darker but we can take care of that when we come to the coloring stage now to do the edge of the door so you can see I've got the um, top of the left hand wing curving down and it goes just a little bit past the uh, corner of the windscreen or windshield. I go a little bit further to the left of that and then I do that kind of backwards C curve just down to join the chrome trim and then from the bottom of the chrome trim. Now you remember me talking about extending a line from the um, a bumper well actually you've got to go down quite a bit below the bumper I took the wheel arch even further down you can see I've extended the line actually twice there and made two pencil lines where the bottom of the car is going to be these should be have a very very slight taper up towards the chrome trim 
Uh, one is going to be the bottom of the door line. As you can see, that was actually the original line I made from the bottom of the car, but it didn't look deep enough. So I took it a little bit further and that looked better. And it meant I could use the uh, slightly higher line for the bottom edge of the door. And so I drew a slanting line coming down to the right, curving at the bottom in the corner to, to meet that first line I'd made. And that's the line of the door. OK, now because I'd already put the line there in pencil, it was easy to take the door line, uh, the bottom of the door line uh, to the left, um, about the same distance as that corner is from the bottom of the wheel arch. And then I finished the uh, windscreen. Now, things to point out when you're doing the windscreen, try and get the height of it about right. OK, it doesn't need to go. Uh, it shouldn't be anything like the distance from the top of the wing down to the bottom of the door it should be quite shorter than that. If anything, it should be shorter than the distance from the chrome trim down to the bottom corner of the door. And then on the right hand side, the right hand edge, edge of the windscreen. Now, that's actually the glass itself because um, of the way, uh, because of the curve, you don't actually get to see the chrome trim on the right hand side. Now, that slant has got to be quite a bit more pronounced than the slant on the left hand side because of the angle of the car. I mean, a nicely curved line at the top of the um, windscreen to join them up and then draw the line outside it. Or if you've done it inside, draw the line inside it just to make the chrome trim, as you can see there. Once you've got that right, you're well on the way to um, getting your Volvo spot on. You've already done the face of the car now. So we're going to do the side windows and uh, the rest of the door and we're going to finish the chrome trim off. Now, look carefully at the chrome trim at the distance from the right hand edge of the door to the apex of the wheel arch. And that's about the distance you want to take the chrome trim before curving it up and round. Um, again, gauge from what you can actually see on the screen. The curve round should start above where you did the bottom, you ended the bottom of the door. And then you have a more exaggerated slant and curve up towards that. Now, doing the side windows, again, you draw the um, right hand edge of the front side window. That should be parallel with the line of the windscreen. It's just opposite. But when you get to the top where the uh, windscreen curves around, take it a little bit further and then gently curve it down. But the curve should be more pronounced than the curve on the windscreen. OK, not quite to where you've done the chrome trim because you want a nice couple of slanting lines down to end just before that chrome trim. And then from the top right hand corner of that window, again, uh, a little post uh, dis um, separating it, slanting downwards diagonally to the left. OK. Now, the bottom line of the side windows, I want you just to carry that on a bit. You can carry it on as far as you like, really, because it's pencil. You can rub it out. Now, you're going to make the rear window and you do this by imagine a slanting back to front capital D. And that's the best way I can describe it. Do a couple of lines inside it as well to make the trim of the windows and then Take the top curve of the D, but where it starts curving down and round, carry that curve down to meet the line which you just made, which is the continuation of the top line of the windscreen. And that's going to be the rear of the car. Can you also see I took that line up, curving over the front windows to where it's just flattens out at the past the top left hand corner of the windscreen because that's going to be the roof uh, and now it's really starting to look like the outline of the car I'm really pleased with it by this stage so now you can see in pencil I've drawn in the rear of the car that line which we extended 
I pushed it quite away. Actually, I pushed it too far. You can see I've actually made um, three lines where the uh, rear of the car curves downwards to the tail light. I've actually made one, two, three lines there, but that's fine because I've made it in pencil. So it's not going to be too difficult to do something with. Draw the little bump for the rear light, the tail light, and then we slant down to the right. Now what I did, if you look at the bottom of the car, I took the line at the bottom of the car below the car door and I just extended that further till I could see where it was going to end. But the rear of the car doesn't come down that far, it only comes down about halfway. So I curved the line from the rear bumper down to about halfway and then stopped. And then I drew in the shape of the wheel arch. Remember our classic upside down U slightly slanted to the side. And that goes from the bottom of the car to meet where you just draw on the rear of the car as well. And I was quite satisfied with that and thought I could start inking that quite nicely. Which I've just done. So you can see I rubbed out the lines I didn't need in pencil at the rear of the car. Drew in the top line but also drew another line just inside the outline because that's a little bit of chrome trim and again you can see i've ignored the pencil lines which i didn't need and didn't want and that's looking really good now it just needs the tires so remember whenever you're drawing wheels on a car they're very very unlikely to be circular you're doing ovals and semicircles and the ovals are always going to be taller than they're wide look at the position where they sit in the wheel arch maybe do the rear one first because that's not a complete oval because part of it is covered by the wheel arch you can so see the bottom's almost pointed and then flat before it starts curving back round again you can do the same as well now look at the front uh, the closest front wheel the left hand front wheel and again just try and get the semicircles right but with a little bit of a flat edge at the bottom before they curve up round again then another semicircle going to join the bumper and then just draw in the uh, right hand wheel so go from the right hand towards the right hand end of the number plate just a little bit in from the right in a semicircle which flattens out more the curve flattens out more until it's underneath the left hand bumper and there you go that's the outline of our volvo and i've got to say i'm really pleased i think testing things out with the pencil made a huge difference and there you can see i've just drawn in some detail of the suspension on the left at the front of the car and put the hubcaps into the um, wheels so i made the decision normally i'd start with watercolor and i'd apply it to the wheels and wheel arches before i start the bodywork however um this time i thought i wanted to see what results i could get by just using brush pens so I started on the bodywork and applied, it looks pink, it is actually a red brush pen, but for some reason it comes out looking quite pink. And I used the moist brush to spread the colour across the bonnet where I'm going to create some highlights. Uh, Got to be honest, I wasn't impressed with the results at this stage. So there you can see I persevered and finished off most of the bodywork. This is where it started to improve. I took another red brush pen, a deeper red, and started applying it on top of the pinky colour. And this immediately started to look a lot better. And that meant I could use the pinky colour as highlights and try and blend them together. Which you can start to see there. There's some nice results on the left hand uh, front wing by the headlight. And we're starting to spread the colour across the bonnet. Um, I made it too wet, as you can see. If you look on that patch on the bonnet, it looks awful. But a little bit of care and uh, discreet use of a hairdryer to just 
dry it out in a way that I wanted and that took care of that. And you can see the bonnet looks better there now it hasn't got the wrinkles in. So I started to work on the um, wheel arches and the tyres, uh, my trademark blue and purple combination because that's worked well for me in the past. Um, very bright, bright blue which um, I spread with the brush pen that's actually the darkest blue brush pen that I've, I've got I spread with a moist pen sorry left the headlines but very messily applied um, but that's that's all part of the charm and part of the fun you can also see I used a moistened brush pen uh, sorry moistened um, brush with uh, a tiny bit of clear water on it to pull the colour across on the edges of the car. They do actually make it look like it's going fast, which is quite nice, but it was a bit exaggerated. I decided I'd take care of that later. So again, a little bit more work done on the wings. You can see the red's been more applied to the roof and also to the right hand wing. But also I used um, a purple pen quite lightly to apply um, the color of the interior it's it is the interior of the car was actually red but it looks much darker you can see I've tried darkening it just at the front of the windscreen there and that seems to have worked quite well if you look in the wheel arches I've started applying the black brush pen too as well and spreading the color there across the blue and onto the top of the tires and it is starting just starting to look something that I'm not unhappy with. <coughs> right, a lot more detail now, particularly if you look at the interior. I've darkened down the purple using the brush pen. You can actually see how the, I've also did the, um, the color through the glass as a sort of greeny yellow and that's spread but I don't mind that a little bit of mess a little bit of spread like that all adds um, visual texture and there are things you can do about it later anyway a uh, little bit more darkening on the wheels and also I painted in some of the details of the um, of the hubcaps there which are sort of a bright red and white and silver Okay, now not a lot to notice, but if you look closely, you can see I've done some work defining the bumpers and also added a bit of grey to the headlights and started sketching in detail. Also, some of the shadows on the chrome of the radiator. And now we're getting closer and closer to a finish. Um, Having darkened the underside of the car using a bit of grey, I now applied a little bit of brown on top of that and I'm quite pleased at the way that's worked out. Um, you can see I took a moist pen and just um, de-emphasized the, the smudges coming off the, the rear of the car. I also used a fine liner to um, go around the edges of the um, windows from the interior and that looks a lot better. Uh, I've gone round the exterior of the, the chrome surround of the windscreen and the side windows and that looks better. So it's all adding more definition to the car. Very nearly finished now. You can see I've drawn in windscreen wipers. I've also used a fine liner to do the details of the radiator little bit fiddly takes a little bit of time but well worth doing because um, it really adds more definition also I took um, a brown brush pen to do the shadow underneath the chrome trim on the side and also to create um, highlights underneath the left hand um, headlight and shadows on, on the bodywork and that's it that's finished ladies and gents uh, not a lot to notice that I've done if you look in the center of the windshield or the windscreen you can see I've just drawn in the driver's mirror it has a very odd driver's mirror there um, low down rather than at the top of the windscreen uh, did my final darkening work and definition work on the wheels 
and you can if you look in the number plate the license plate um, three or four of the photos which I was using actually had this plate this show plate where it says Volvo and I really like that and I'm trying to reproduce the lettering uh, and basically that's it if you've enjoyed this video I'd love you to subscribe uh, and I'd love you to have a go at it yourself and see if you can produce your own and if you do then go to my blog on uh, blogspot artdaveclark at blogspot.com and in the comment box post the picture of what you yourself have managed to I'd love to see it so what I'm going to do now to finish I'm going to show you the stages very very quickly in time lapse and uh, then I'll say farewell so here we go And that's it. So see you next time. Hope you enjoyed.